Any business endeavor starts with an idea, but for it to succeed, there must be a plan that defines the goal to be reached and how to achieve it. In software development, that plan is a business requirements document. Let's imagine you want to build a house. You've found the right piece of property in a lovely neighborhood, and you've even sketched a picture of a perfect house you've been dreaming about. The project seems ready to launch straight away. As you show the sketch to the developer, it turns out that it's not nearly close to start construction. There's still a myriad of things to discuss. Developers want to know the details about the framing, siding, roofing, plumbing, insulation, until you feel you're losing your sanity. Well, unfortunately, you can't build a house or a piece of software with an idea alone, no matter how brilliant it is. Teams need tech documentation that transforms abstract ideas into concrete expectations and guides them throughout the project. The Business Requirements Document, or BRD, serves as such a North Star, illuminating the development path from concept to completion. It explicitly clarifies the business aspects of the project, including objectives, resources, costs, and deadlines. The BRD is written at the beginning of a project with two main purposes. First, it helps communicate the business needs and values of a project to managers, investors, and other decision makers. This way, they know what the project will take and what they can expect in the result. On the other hand, the BRD also includes high-level technical information, so its second purpose is acting like a bridge that connects non-tech stakeholders with software developers, giving everyone a shared understanding of the project. All that said, a BRD is frequently created for presentation to a mixed audience of stakeholders. Now that you understand whether you need it at all, let's talk about how to write it and what its main components are. Even though every project is unique, there are some common sections worth including in a BRD. And it all starts with an executive summary, which is, well, just that, a short description of the project's background and main target. Though it's usually just a few paragraphs long, it must explain why you initiated the project at all. Getting back to our house construction example, an executive summary could probably be something like, the apartment we currently live in became too small for our family. The kids want a dog, but it all just won't fit. Parking is always a problem in our neighborhood. We also spend too much time taking the kids to school. So we need a bigger house with a garage so that everyone gets more space and it must be closer to the school. For a software project, write about the specific challenges that you want to address and the proposed solutions. It's also the right place to provide relevant statistics or market data to add credibility and justify the need for a project. After you outline the high-level scope, the next section to fill out is the project objectives. This part must describe the results you expect to achieve and how they contribute to your overall business goals. Also, include the specific metrics to measure project outcomes. For building a house, the objectives can be save one hour drive daily or every family member has their own room. For software projects, you might write something like gain 100,000 subscribers by the end of Q4 2025 or decrease cart abandonment by 40% by the end of Q3 2025. Now that you've explained the whys, it's time to talk about the whats. Project scope is the section where you list the pieces of work that must be done during the project and the ones that must not. To fill it out, break the entire undertaking into smaller blocks and define the main deliverables in each of them. As we plan our house, the project scope can include tasks starting from make the design, get permits and approvals, and prepare the site, all the way up to pave the driveway and landscape the yard. Oh, and let's not forget about the mailbox. You might also want a pool, but it doesn't fit in your budget right now, so you can add it to the out of scope part. Similarly, the software project scope can list tasks like redesign the checkout page, develop the filter functionality, or integrate with the review platform. Here, you have to keep the balance. Be detailed enough to cover all the tasks to be done, but avoid going down the rabbit hole list of the smallest activities. Also, don't confuse project scope with product scope. The project scope is broader and might include, say, pre-development tasks like conduct market research and 
gather requirements, while a product scope is basically a list of features to be developed. In the BRD, the product scope is defined in the functional requirements section. As you're working on your house design, some of the requirements can be a dog must have a kennel in the backyard, the AC must be controlled remotely, or there must be a guest room. The functional requirements for software often come in the form of user stories, sketching interaction scenarios and user flows. In this case, they sound like this. As an online shopper, I want to filter products by price, category, and rating so that I easily find what I need. Or as a traveler, I want to choose airplane seats online so that I sit with my friends. As you prepare the list of requirements, it's worth talking to different stakeholders to get diverse perspectives. And that's what our next section is about. Stakeholders are basically anyone who's affected by or can affect the project. The stakeholders for your house construction project will be your family members, the architect, the builders, your future neighbors, the local governing body that must give approval, and so on. In software projects, there are also many stakeholder groups with diverse interests. Some of them are actively involved in the project. We're talking about development team members and the project manager. Other stakeholders are less engaged. Say, C-level managers or investors might not deal with the project on a daily basis, but still have a big impact on it. End users are another stakeholder group as they have their own interest in the end product. As you list stakeholders in your BRD, specify their role in the project. This way, everyone understands who is responsible for what. Okay, so now we have the why, what, and who. A good plan also specifies the when, which gets us to the dreaded schedule and deadline section. To keep your team accountable, the BRD contains a schedule along with all important deadlines and critical milestones. That helps monitor progress and have stakeholders updated on the project at specific phases. As you plan construction of the house, you estimate the timing for each phase. For example, you expect all the preparation and paperwork to be done in one month, then the foundation to take two to three weeks, framing to last for about another month, and so on. The software project can also be broken down into phases such as planning, design, development, etc. We explain them in detail in our video about the software development lifecycle, so be sure to check it out. Estimate the time for each of these stages and specify the main deliverables to be completed by the end of each phase. Another vital estimation to include is the cost. The financial statements section of the BRD contains the estimated cost of each project phase, as well as the funding sources. Both in construction and software development, there are many estimation techniques. For example, if you or someone you know has already built a house before, you can roughly calculate the costs based on experience. That's analogous estimating. You can also develop three different estimates for various scenarios. Optimistic, pessimistic, and, well, realistic. Then, you can calculate the expected costs with the following formula. Multiply the realistic estimate by four times its value. Add the optimistic and pessimistic numbers, and then divide the whole sum by six. This is a popular technique called three-point estimating, giving more weight to the realistic scenario. Another approach is to break down the entire project into smaller subtasks and have the people directly involved in doing the job estimate the required time and resources for each subtask. The sum of their estimations will give you the approximate total. That's called bottom-up estimating. It takes more time, but the results are usually more precise. Whichever technique you choose, remember that none of them is perfectly accurate. All sorts of unexpected things might happen along the way, so when estimating either time or money, leave yourself some wiggle room, just in case, you know. The financials part is often complemented by the cost-benefit analysis, where you compare the expected costs and revenues to determine whether the project is worth the investment. After all, the point of the whole thing is to make money, isn't it? The cost-benefit analysis usually looks like a table where one column lists the estimated spending and another contains anticipated gains. The total values are then compared in the bottom line. We have to admit that making a business requirements document takes a lot of work. But hey, don't panic just yet. We're going to make this process a bit easier for you. Here are a few tips on how to write an award-winning BRD. 
A good way to approach any tech documentation is to refer to previous projects and learn from past experience. Using an example or template instead of writing everything from scratch will save you tons of time. As you gather information, by the way, the fancy name for this process is requirements elicitation, involve different stakeholder groups. It will help you look at the project from several angles and get fresh ideas. Some ways to elicit requirements are brainstorming sessions, interviews, observations, workshops, and surveys. Define business context. When writing down all the gathered information, keep in mind that the BRD is the document that will be read by investors, top managers, and other decision makers. So the main point of the BRD is to provide business context. Also, remember that you're not writing for computer geeks, so be clear. Avoid technical terms, jargon, or abbreviations that might be misinterpreted. Yes, better throw out all those IDEs, APIs, and SDKs. Use simple language and be concise. This way, people will understand you better and faster. And here's another little trick that will help you get through to your readers. Add visuals such as pictures, diagrams, graphs, and charts. Human brains understand visuals better than text, so employ imagery. Then, once you have your business requirements document ready, don't rush to present it to stakeholders. Validate the content first. Be sure to double, no, better, triple check your thesis so no critical errors creep in. Try to get an expert on the subject matter to review your BRD and leave feedback. Okay, now it seems we've covered everything and you're all set to create a phenomenal BRD. Remember that it's not set in stone and can change along with market situations, company strategy, or customer needs. So be sure to review it quarterly or annually and adjust if needed. Let us know about your experience with the BRD in the comments section below. And stay tuned for more project documentation explainers.